I was recently asked what I carry when we're out hiking. So today I'm going to go over what pack I take and also the gear from head to foot. Packs are such a personal item. I can't tell you what to get, but I can tell you some of the difference between packs that you might want to look for. I have multiple packs, so I guess maybe I have a pack problem. Uh, I brought down four of them. I have more. I've actually gotten rid of all my framed packs, you know, the old days when we, when we backpacked with Kelty packs and they had those aluminum frames. This one is probably my oldest backpack. The good thing about this is it's larger, so if you're going on a really long day hike, then this is great. It has a much sturdier and, uh, you know, hip belt, so it actually wraps around and gives you a little bit more cushioning in the hips. And it has a frame, not a, you know, it has a, this mesh that sits away from the back of the pack, so you get more air circulation. So if you sweat a lot, then you probably want a pack that does that. I don't tend to sweat much when I'm hiking, uh, so I've pretty much moved on from this because I don't need to carry so much. We don't hike as far as we used to. So I've moved on to lighter packs. The next pack I'm gonna show you, it's probably half the weight. And this is another Osprey bag. And at some point in, in the last several decades, Osprey has started to put a whistle on their sternum strap. And it's so funny because I didn't discover this until several years ago and I've had this for oh, probably 10 or 15 years. Um, but this has been a really good lightweight bag for me. It has a, a smaller, smaller hip material but at least it has some. Lots of pockets, which John wouldn't like so much. It does have a spot for the water bladder, so if you like to carry a water bladder, I don't particularly like those because I don't like the taste of the water in those bags. Here's another Osprey bag that is lightweight. It probably weighs about the same as that one, and I'm not sure why I bought it. I certainly didn't need it, uh, but it, um, it has, uh, you know, the ex uh, some more expansion area so you can carry more. And then the final one I'll show you is the one I picked up recently in the Grand Canyon on that trip because I had forgotten to bring a pack. This one I actually like quite well. I'm kind of surprised. It has very few pockets. It still has the, the you know, pouches for water, are, although not as deep as the ones on the Osprey bags. And it has, um, it has a, a strap here that I have now added some Velcro to. And the reason is because sometimes you don't want to actually hold your walking sticks. So I can stick my walking stick inside of here and then I can strap it down with this little piece of Velcro. And this is a, a special Velcro that has hooks on one side, loops on the other, so you don't need two pieces. It'll stick anywhere on that, on that piece. And I put a, one on each side. This has worked really well. Now the problem with these really lightweight bags is they have to eliminate something. And in this case, they've eliminated any kind of a hip material support. And so if I'm on a longer hike, that would be uncomfortable for me. It also doesn't really have any cushioning in the strap, but you're not carrying much in these small bags. So it's worked out well. And it basically just has a smaller pocket and the top where you can put you know, your wallet and smaller items, and then one big pocket for jackets and stuff like that. This company is called Deuter, D-E-U-T-E-R. And I just noticed recently that inside it has some emergency uh, information. And uh, it's something that I didn't know. It tells you what you need to do if you're signaling uh, like a helicopter. So there are two signals uh, that you can give to uh, aircraft to tell them you need help or you don't need help. Apparently, if you don't need help, you go like this with your arms for no, it's supposed to look like an N. And if you do need help, then you go like this for why. Yes, you do need help. So there are some of the options you have with packs. You just have to go and try them on. Uh, better packs do come in sizes, and so make sure you're trying on the size that's appropriate for your frame. So now let's talk about the 10 essentials. And if you've never heard that, that term before, it came about in the 1930s. There's an organization in Seattle called the Mountaineers, and they came up with this list of 10 things that people should take with them to be prepared for an emergency if they're out in the wilderness. I'll go over the, the 10 essentials and also add in a few, uh, few other things that I take and some of the clothing that I wear. Now let's move on to the 10 essentials. And the first one is navigation. Now in the old days, it was always a compass and a map. 
And nowadays, it's more likely to be uh, Gaia GPS on your phone or all trails or something like that. But it's still nice to carry a map because you could, you know, your battery could die and it's sometimes just easier to, to kind of see where you are on a map. I love this uh, series of maps that's put out in California by a guy named Tom Harrison. And uh, these are nice because they're coated. They won't get, you know, soggy in the rain. They're just really good and they, they cover larger areas. So this one is on the San Diego backcountry and includes Anza Borrego. But you can get them for all, a, a ton of areas in California. And I think he's actually started moving into other states. But a topographic map is always great to take on a hike. The other thing we always take is a PLD, a personal location device. Ours is the Garmin InReach. I recently discovered an alternative that looks interesting called Zolio. I'll put a link in the description box. And it's the mini. Um, this allows you to signal. There's an SOS button on here, so if you had an emergency, and uh, I mean truly an emergency, you could push the SOS button and they will send in um, you know, search and rescue. But you know, it could be quite pricey if you uh, have a problem. But we do take that. And uh, if I'm hiking alone, I will strap that on my pack, have it you know, readily available should I need it. And because we are carrying electronic devices like our phones, we always carry an extra battery with the cables necessary to recharge our phones. The next thing is a headlamp. And I would not rely on a phone for your, for your light if you had an emergency. One of these uh, little headlamps will last many, many hours and you can hike at night with them. They often have uh, flashing lights. This one just has a, a high and a low beam. Um, and you can strap around your head and you're good to go uh, for a very long time running off the battery on one of these things. This one's rechargeable. Or you can get some that work on batteries and carry extra batteries. So for sun protection, that would be things like hats and uh, sunscreen and also coverings for your arms if you're going to be out in the hot sun. My new favorite hat right now is made by a company called Wallaroo Hat Company. They're located in Colorado. And this model is the Cabo. I think it's actually for men. I have a fairly large head, 22 and a half inches. This is the medium large, if that helps you. The company must have seen me wearing this in a recent video and they contacted me wanting me to do like a, a product review type thing. And I told them I don't do that, but I've asked them whether I could get a discount for you guys in case you guys wanted to order one of their hats. So I will put that in the description box. Sun protection can be sunscreen, but it can also be clothing. And I have a couple of options to share with you. One of them is, are these um, sleeves that you pull up. So if, you, you know, if, if it's really hot and you don't want to wear a long sleeve shirt, uh, we often carry these when we're cycling. So you can pull these all the way up to uh, like a short sleeve shirt. And actually I'm thinking, because they do have a tendency to fall down, I've been thinking about putting a little piece of Velcro on there and on the shirt that I usually wear when I'm out hiking. And the shirt that I usually wear out hiking, or I like to wear, is this uh, Patagonia Capoline shirt because they dry quickly and they, uh, they wash easily and they're just, uh, you know, no, no mess, no problems. They're great shirts. And then the other option that has become a new favorite is the another Patagonia shirt that has uh, a hood. And for me, one piece of clothing that I'm carrying has to have a hood on it because if I get cold, I can pull, pull it over my ears or even protect yourself from the sun. And this is such a lightweight fabric. I really like this top. I wish they'd come out with more colors. <laughs> and this is a, a medium. It has a little pocket on the side and I love that top. My first aid kit is not as elaborate as it used to be. Back in the old days, we used to get blisters all the time on our feet because the boots weren't as good as they are today. And so I was always carrying moleskin and you know, tapes and all these things. But today it's really mostly a few band-aids, uh, some little things of Neosporin and maybe some gauze. And I uh, got some, some of those uh, wound strips and some vet wrap or whatever you call it. I guess in the... In the Cats and dogs, they call it vet wrap. I guess it's some kind of a wrap that you guys know about this. It sticks to itself, basically. And that can be wrapped around 
uh, the gauze. And what else? Oh, and then of course some, some kind of aspirin or Tylenol or whatever it is that you take for pain relief. It's also probably smart to take some Benadryl because somebody could have an allergic reaction to something and they could take a couple of Benadryl to counteract that until you were able to get some first aid. The next item is a knife. And my favorite knives are these little tiny Swiss Army knives. <laughs> Take up almost no space. They have a little a toothpick, some tweezers, uh, scissors, and the knife. And that I find to be just about all I need. The next item is a fire starter of some kind, either a, a cigarette lighter or waterproof matches. And I have to admit, I don't usually carry either. When we were in the Grand Canyon last fall, I picked up a gift actually for our son. It was a carabiner that had a little tiny uh, flint thing on there that you could start a fire with. So I may try to get one for myself because I just don't ever carry matches. Item number seven is shelter. And that's another thing that I don't carry. I suppose if uh, we were going, you know, I don't know where we'd be going that I would want to take a shelter, but I guess if it may be rainy and cold, maybe I'd take a tarp or a poncho or something like that, but that's something I don't carry, but that is on the official 10 essentials list. Number eight is food, and uh, we don't tend to make like big lunches or anything like that when we hike. I usually just take snacks, maybe some uh, dried fruit and cheese and some peanut M&Ms and other nuts and things like that. Number nine is water. And uh, I usually take a uh, water, you know, one or two water bottles, depending on where we're going. And for emergencies, a water filter. So if I can find a water source, I can filter the water and we'll have plenty. I do not carry any kind of tablets. I, um, I cannot ingest iodine um, because of a stomach issue. In fact, uh, when we were on a hike one time 20 years ago, I didn't realize that the water filter I had purchased uh, put iodine in the water and I ended up in the emergency room. Uh, so learn my lesson there, no more tablets of any kind. The last item on the official list is extra clothing. I use gloves. Uh, we always wear gloves when we hike for a couple of reasons. You never know when you're gonna fall and it's nice to have a little bit extra padding. These are Pearl Izumi cycling gloves. Uh, they work really well for me. And they also are great when you're using hiking sticks, then you don't get blisters on your hands. Next item is a gaiter of some sort to keep your neck warm, but these things serve so many functions. Uh, they can keep, you know, you can put them around your head to keep your ears warm, to keep your hair out of your face. But there's one thing to look for when you're buying these things. They all say they stretch, but you want one that has four-way stretch, not just two-way. So not only do you need it to stretch this way, but you also want it to stretch this way, and those are a lot harder to find. So do your best to find one that stretches in both directions, and you'll be more comfortable. Boots. I, my foot is a nine and a half, and it's borderline narrow. So if you have a really wide foot, you know, Merrill boots may not be for you, but they fit me really well, and I've had well, probably a dozen pair of Merrells over the last you know, 20 years. But you just want to make sure you have shoes that have really good, uh, you know, tread on the bottom. All that slipping we did last week in Mosaic Canyon was because those rocks were so highly polished from people climbing up them, you know, probably hundreds of people a day climbing up that, that canyon and had polished that rock so it was as, as smooth as ice. And John had a much harder time because he really didn't wear the appropriate shoes on that trip. He has since bought another pair, but it's got to have some really good tread uh, or you're going to have some problems on some trails. And then over the boots, I like to wear gaiters. And these are the Dirty Girl gaiters. They come in lots of different colorways. They hook over the lace and then there's Velcro on the bottom that hooks to the, to the shoe. And that keeps uh, debris from getting in your boots because you don't, if you're walking up like a wash with lots of sand or, or dirt or whatever, you don't want to have to stop all the time, take your shoes off so that you can empty them out. So I really like gaiters. Walking sticks or trekking poles, uh, as they're sometimes called, these are great. And sometimes people think that they're just for old people. <laughs> 
but they really aren't. They can really keep you from falling, hitting your face. Uh, I can't tell you how many times these things have saved my life. I sometimes only carry one, partly because I'm carrying a camera in the, in what, the other hand, but I'm so glad that John finally reached his teachable moment, as my mom would call it, and, and, and uses walking sticks as well now. But you know, he was very resistant in the beginning. And then one of the things that I do is on one of the sticks, the one that I'm taking, I will wrap some uh, duct tape around the pole so that I have that in case of an emergency. Uh, there was a time many years ago, back in the days when we, we walked with uh, those big leather hiking boots with the lug soles and the, the bottom of the foot dropped off. Uh, and so I was able, it was just the front of it, so it was just flapping. I had duct tape with me. I was able to unwind it and wind it around the shoe and it really saved the day. So that is what we carry when we go out hiking or we try to carry. <laughs> we don't always carry all of that stuff. That's what is good to have in your pack ready to go and in your car, your vehicle, your van, whatever you're traveling in, it's good to keep it in there. Otherwise you end up having to buy more packs along the road. I hope this was helpful to some of you. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.